Parlamento da República Moldova. Uh, thank you for giving uh, your acceptance uh, to participate in this interview, and I hope you are going to enjoy it um, as much as I will. I thank you very much. I thank you very much for approaching me with. Um, um, I, I would say it's very important as um, such an interesting subject. Although I'm not uh, a professional, or let's say I'm not specialized in immigration, but of mm -hmm. course, general, general issues and my my personal view would be mm -hmm. my great pleasure to share with you. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm looking for, your personal view, which I'm very sure it's going to be valuable Thank for, for everybody. So let's try it. Yeah, um, so we are going to look at on um, the authorities' response towards migration because I think, especially in this time, uh, we identify the fact that immigration from Moldova is quite a big aspect and is quite a challenge, especially it proves uh, to be a challenge in the internal affairs of Moldova, in the labor workforce, education, especially the exodus of intelligence. Um, and I would really like to see your view on these matters. And first of all, um, I'm really curious if you think, or you as a representative of a parliament, think that uh, this is a challenge. This is a challenge. This is the biggest challenge and a threat to, to the country generally and for the existence mm -hmm. and unfortunately the authorities they do not really understand the, how deep and how big is the danger and the threat and, and the, the challenge generally for the country and its future mm -hmm. because uh, um, uh, day, day by day, week by week or year by year it's becoming more and more difficult to find uh, human resources in many mm -hmm. areas of the activities. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking only about, uh, let's say, um, um, high profile or maybe some specialities which uh, w would uh, be based on, uh, on, on, on higher education. I'm also talking about professional education. Mm -hmm. So you cannot find people even to work on the... On the working sites or engineers uh, we uh, there is no any policy for many years which would plan human resources also in terms of uh, graduation of the universities mm -hmm. we see year by year many lawyers and uh, economists mm -hmm. and we see less engineers or less uh, IT professionals mm -hmm. and without speaking and, and uh, it's even worse when it comes to pedagogy, philology, or those uh, professions which are not so, uh, let's say, well paid, mm -hmm. like uh, psychologists. Uh, um, so, uh, and unfortunately, I did not see the authorities being very much um, focused on a strategy, mm -hmm. how to retain people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and moreover, how to bring Moldovans back. Mm -hmm. There were some good ideas also launched some programs in the let's say last three four years and uh, I am quite proudly because I was also participating in the, in the, in the assessment and launching those projects in mm -hmm. the previous years but this is not enough this mm -hmm. is not enough because um, the strategy of retaining people and bringing back Moldovans, and not only Moldovans. We are talking about opening the country generally. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was never a focus and a priority for the government, mm -hmm. in any governments. I'm talking about 10 years uh, back in the history and 10 years from now, uh, I don't see any, any, any plans, any strategies, which is unfortunate. But speaking about the current issues, um, migration could be divided in two stages as a, let's say, a challenge which is for today because we are talking about, uh, let's put it in this way, before pandemic mm -hmm. and during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, migration is an issue and a challenge for Moldova generally, but during the pandemic period of time, for starting from, let's say, January or February this year, uh, we have another issue because around 150 or maybe close to 200,000 Moldovans which were living abroad temporarily, seasonal workers mm -hmm. working abroad, they came back 
to Moldova because they were running from the problems there. Mm -hmm. And um, Moldovan authorities did not do almost anything, well, nothing, uh, to help these people to be integrated back, to give somehow a chance to 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 have a, an income, to be employed, or at least to come with some social assistance. So, how do you think this could be improved? By providing, by first of all, to to brainstorm a bit longer and more. To first is to assess the situation. Mm -hmm. Second. There is nothing to discover something new. Uh, it's just to take some very good practices from from other countries, mm -hmm. and to really come with some uh, some proposals for the for the community, for the society, and for especially for those who came back in this period of time. And we are talking about um, maybe some exemptions to set up uh, businesses, small medium businesses. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, allocating some funds to set up the businesses or to uh, help the the current business the the, the, the companies to recruit people so mm -hmm. to develop to open new jobs mm -hmm. in, in order to develop the business or to at least uh, keep the business because there are many companies which are very very close to be bankrupt or go mm -hmm. to insolvency so uh, so it's really uh, there is nothing uh, I would say there is nothing Spatial. It's nothing to to come with something like out of the box or extraordinary. There are many solutions which were already implemented by many countries, and it's just to take some good practices, um, adjust to the Moldovan environment, mm -hmm. and of course to implement. I would say it's quite a challenge to adjust to the Moldovan environment because we are quite uh, an exception, and we we, we are not alike any of the liberal democracies in Europe. Well, there were some good uh, some good cases. Mm -hmm. Um, let's take, for example, a project which was working very well, and it's still a good uh, a good idea uh, in Romania. It's a it, it used to be, or it is still implemented in many countries. But we took the Romanian case mm -hmm. as an example. This project, which is called Prima Casa, mm -hmm. the first house, mm -hmm. which was introduced two years ago, of course with some adjustments to the Moldovan market. Mm -hmm. And this project was focused for the youth uh, to be able, with, with not so big income that they have, the revenue that they have, to be able to buy their own home, mm -hmm. house, flat, whatever. Mm -hmm. And in time, so to have like a very good mortgage conditions, which mm -hmm. the market does not uh, provide anything like this, mm -hmm. so the, the the country, the authority, uh, the state, the authorities, they are coming to partially cover the mortgage, partially cover the interest, um, uh, with very good conditions for the advance payment, and also with very uh, regulating the interest rate generally. Mm -hmm. In one year, in 2018, the first year of the implementation, we had more than 1,500 uh, beneficiaries of the project, which means these are those 105,000 young people who could leave the country, mm -hmm. potentially, mm -hmm. as a challenge, looking for other uh, better conditions. Well, they stayed home uh, here in mm -hmm. Moldova. Some, some of them, they set up their families, I mean, mm -hmm. engaged or they have babies. Personally, in, in my team, I had a case when someone who was traveling and moving from one uh, flat to another, from uh, leasing one flat, renting another flat with uh, a, a youth, uh, a young couple. Mm -hmm. uh, they could not even uh, think about uh, children. Well, they used and they are beneficiaries of this, uh, of, of this project and now they have babies and they stay home. I mean, they stay in the country, they are mm -hmm. not leaving. So what you're saying is that we shouldn't focus that much on uh, post-migrational, I don't know, um, measures to be taken, but maybe mm. more on pre-migrational? No, measures? I think we, it should be a, a comprehensive program which would tackle both. I mean, uh, to retain people in Moldova mm -hmm. and to create those conditions so they stay in Moldova. Mm -hmm. And second is to bring back Moldovans. And third, it's even the third one to open the market for the for other uh, nationalities to come to Moldova, mm -hmm. because we still 
have good potential from a geography point of view. I mean, I mean geographically, Moldova is quite in the uh, in a very good zone to be used also for the businesses for migration. But unfortunately, we still have many um, administrative uh, barriers and uh, and uh, bureaucracy, which we call it as bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and many many foreign nationals they cannot come so easy to Moldova, set up a business, generally at least to come for, for touristic purposes. Mm -hmm. So these three pillars would be the base in order to develop the country in the future. Mm -hmm. Without any of them or all of them, we do not have a success. And most probably the development will be so slow that we will lose again and again people. Mm -hmm. They will leave the country mm -hmm. looking for better opportunities, now, taking into account that the Moldovans can travel abroad in within European Union without any restrictions mm -hmm. because of the uh, visa liberalization regime, um, of course, they are looking for other opportunities to settle somewhere in other countries. Initially, maybe for studies, as youth they are doing, and then afterwards to, to, to live there. Mm -hmm. It is quite interesting because it seems like you are supporting this whole concept of globalization. While I was thinking that um, the uh, the aim of the parliament would be more to retain people maybe in Moldova and somehow stop this migrational um, process. I know it sounds qu quite harsh, but don't. But uh, maybe it's a misunderstanding. I I do believe that we have to have a more a wider approach. Mm -hmm. Of course, is to keep and to have the priority by keeping people here in the country. But uh, you cannot just. If we would like to keep the country in Moldova, we will just close the borders and we'll, uh, we'll I don't know, install a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. But this is not the way of doing so. People mm -hmm. have to travel. The people they really have to uh, see other places and they have to be literally maybe study in the foreign universities. Uh, myself, uh, I was, um, I was, um, I think I left the country, generally home in the country, uh, close to the age of 15. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was 50 years, 15 years old when I left the country for studies in Romania. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, graduating uh, the high school first and then the university. Mm -hmm. And the entire life I'm uh, traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. I cannot be in another way and can, I cannot think in another way because I am also, uh, I have a, a multinational family. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, my wife is Czech. Mm -hmm. My children, they are Czech and Moldovans. Mm -hmm. They were born in the Czech Republic. We were living in Moldova. I was studying in Vienna. I was studying in Birmingham, in Cape Town, in South uh, Africa. So, so, and I believe that all my studies and traveling around the world, meeting people, including my wife, mm -hmm. she is Czech, but we met in Budapest, for example. So uh, this is part of my life. And that's the part of my personality, my mm -hmm. professional experience, my uh, everything I do today, everything I think is because of my experience, which is a, a part of my experience and part of my life is traveling mm -hmm. and meeting people, studying, living in many places. But still, I am in, in my country, mm -hmm. I was born here, uh, I love my country, I'm, I, I, I believe I, uh, I'm a, a patriot of my country and I will do my best in order to develop the country and to, and to really support in anything I can do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time we are living in 21st century and in a globalized world and we have to learn from others and by opening the country to bring, uh, to give the possibility for other, for foreign nationals to come here and to, and to have this exchange and share of cultures, of view, of personalities, and this will only uh, make the country even better. And mm -hmm. the European Union have a very nice slogan: it's uh, uh, united through diversity. So uh, we also have a lot of diversity mm -hmm. in Moldova. We have Gagauzians, which are Turkish uh, origin, we have Russians, we have Ukrainians, we have 
Romanian, Moldovan uh, roots as well. So it's a quite multinational and diversity is here in Moldova. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any problems if we would still be more diverse by opening the country and welcoming other nationals here. Mm -hmm. You kind of anticipated a little bit one of my following questions, and which is um, based on the problem now many people they do want to go abroad and study and get all the experiences, beautiful experiences that you described uh, just now. However, it seems to me like many people, especially from my generation, they are tempted to go abroad, but they then they don't come back, even though they say that they will. So to me, it seems like uh, Moldova is also suffering from the exodus of intelligence at the moment. It is true, and the main focus of the authorities is to create those conditions so young people leaving Moldova to study to come back. Mm -hmm. For this we need to provide good conditions starting from the social uh, area like health system, uh, education, so maybe they continue here, I, I, I don't know, post-graduation studies to have. Um, to and also economic area to have a legislation and to have the condition to set up easy a business and to run that business. Moreover, it's, it's about justice, rule of law, mm. because if you do not have the rule of law in the country, then you cannot do any, uh, so many other things, and therefore people leaving the country and youth uh, staying outside after they graduate the universities because they know that if they come to Moldova, they are not fully They're covered, not protected and secure. And, uh, and, and this is a part of our life. All of us we, mm. we would like to wake up in the morning and to know exactly that you are secure and nothing is threatening you. And you have a fair trial, you have justice, you have rule of law and you don't have abuses from the authorities or the, I don't know, from policemen or whatever. So uh, all this has to be properly adjusted, implemented, the reforms has to move on in order to achieve this uh, goal. Otherwise, we will lose and lose, lose uh, um, people from Moldova and indeed we will not have uh, proper human resources for many areas of industries. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the current pandemic, uh, it changed quite a lot and it, it just to me, it seems like it um, highlighted this migrational problem and we can see how much trouble um, the authorities have been going through to get uh, the diaspora home or to just to, to solve the, this whole issue. Um, and many people right now, uh, myself included, are for a longer period of time are in Moldova now. Do you think this could... Uh, be an opportunity for the state to attract them and to m ensure that they remain uh, in the state for a longer period I of time? I generally speak that any crisis, any crisis should be seen as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And including the pandemic crisis should be seen as an opportunity. Because today we have, based on some statistics, which is maybe not so accurate because th there is a lack of information, but based on some statistics, we have around 150,000 of, of our nationals which came back to Moldova because of the pandemic. And, and this is the period of time between March and May. Mm -hmm. Moreover, uh, there are many uh, young generation and students like yourself who are stuck in Moldova and cannot travel to their universities. Mm -hmm. uh, I was stuck in Moldova for three months without seeing my family because it was impossible to reach Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and of course, in these conditions, the, in this environment, the, the the authorities should take the opportunity and to find a way to keep people home, mm -hmm. so they don't have, they don't even think about the second option of leaving. And I'm not talking about you in this case, because you go for the studies. I'm talking about those who are going seasonally to to work somewhere, like for three, four, five, six months, and then coming back, then again leaving. And what does people need? Jobs, mm -hmm. which unfortunately the current government did not provide anything. And moreover, it did not come even to support the businesses which already existed and to create the jobs, vice versa. 
the current government unfortunately did not come with any solution, economic solution to keep the businesses as it is and those jobs who, who which already existed mm -hmm. before pandemic, not talking about uh, creating the new jobs. Uh, moreover, I saw policies and bureaucratic decisions somehow creating problems even for Moldovans to come back home. Um, non-transparent uh, procedures of, of getting permission to fly from many countries back home. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, many of our Moldovans for the for, for first period of time, around two, three weeks when the pandemic started, they were obliged to buy um, uh, medical insurance before boarding on the plane, which is, uh, which is again wrong because there were many people in needs and they they were surviving uh, they did not have uh, any financial means even to buy the tickets and you uh, you as the country uh, the home country you even uh, ask them to buy the insurance mm -hmm. so uh, all these uh, all these decisions was were so wrong that really upset very much many of the our compatriots um, Unfortunately, this government did not take this opportunity to, to, to switch from a crisis to opportunity. Um, there is still time, there is still time, because um, many Moldovans still cannot travel abroad. They are stuck here in Moldova, so it's a really a very important in a very short period of time to find those means in order to create them opportunities to stay here, to retain as many of them to stay home. Mm -hmm. Do you think this could be changed with potentially considering the current circumstances with maybe another government? That's or? what we want and this is our goal. Mm -hmm. um, personally um, and to, together of course with the team I am honored to lead, we were criticizing this government starting from March at the beginning of this pandemic and always it's not only about criticizing but also overcoming with some solutions and some proposals which government never ever even were listening to us. So uh, um, it came to to the end our patient and uh, therefore we try to mobilize the society but also the political class to to send this government and to dismiss this government and to set up a new maybe uh, a technical one with the professionals who would have a different other approach will have maybe more courage in to take some um, difficult decisions mm -hmm. um, by paying a political price therefore better would be to have ministers without too much links to the political class so to really be professionals which will take decisions as as they should be without any political uh, interference. interference or political price so to take such kind of decisions and to switch from crisis to an opportunity to develop proper conditions for the people to stay here and for others to come. It's mm -hmm. some interesting times we're living now. Uh, so we were talking about interaction with other, other countries, uh, but now I'm more curious about interaction with other European institutions, for example, f um, that maybe how does Moldova interact with European institutions uh, on solving the current migration crisis? Um, there are many countries, and especially European Union, that has some projects uh, to help Moldova to retain or to bring back people. Uh, maybe not. It's it's difficult for me to assess because, of course, any penny it's it's a value. I cannot judge and say it's too much or it's uh, not so much, which is paid by the paid attention and it's not only about the money, it's, not, it's, it's, it's about the expertise which we can get from the European Union and from European Union institutions to help us to develop those conditions and products, let, let's say products, in order to retain people, bring people back and to open the country for other opportunities and other nationals. And here we are talking about, uh, it's not only to focus exactly on migration, because if European Union helps us to reform the justice mm -hmm. and to have a strong rule of law, this is indirectly helping us to keep mm -hmm. people home or to bring back. To create back. the necessary conditions. Absolutely. 
or for example to have uh, freedom of speech or freedom of assembly uh, if for example to have infrastructure because European Union or other institutions like World Bank for example helps us to develop infrastructure and of course uh, many of our nationals would like to have a proper infrastructure to have good roads to have uh, safe uh, s uh, safe roads so uh, and this is also uh, a tool to keep people home and to bring others back mm -hmm. so it's not only something to provide directly to focus and to tackle migration it's also it's more comprehensive and wide approach which of course we will have to uh, we are very much uh, appreciate and we uh, have to express our gratitude for European Union helping us. It's European Union as in, as as union and the European institutions but also other member states like for example Romania or Poland or Austria or, uh, so many countries they have uh, programs to help and support Moldova. Mm -hmm. But doesn't this affect somehow the um, international relations of Moldova because um, for example, in Italy, there are many um, immigrants, Moldovan immigrants, and Italy uh, it already suffers from immigration problems. And somehow, considering the fact that Moldova is the, the state that uh, sends so many people to Italy, does this affect somehow from your view? Um, well, we will, its relations. Well, would we would have to ask Italian authorities about this because. Mm -hmm. I do not think that the Moldovan diaspora or Moldova community is really bringing some, uh, well, or let's say Italian authorities are facing big issues and big problems with the Moldovan community. I do not think so. Uh, although Moldovan community is quite big, but there, is, there are bigger communities than Moldovan, if to speak about migration. And I know that the Italian authorities, they are facing some challenges with the migration, illegal mi migration from the Mediterranean area. So from North Africa, from Syria, from Arabian countries. Uh, that's a humanitarian issue which Italy is facing uh, with, in, at least before pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, um, Italy, uh, from my point of view, but of course uh, the authorities know knows better. But I think this brings also the an economic input. Mm -hmm. They have a labor force, uh, diversity, uh, even uh, lower cost of the labor force, um, and this is also bringing a, a social and economic input mm -hmm. uh, for Italy and many countries in Mediterranean area. Not only. Uh, Take for example UK, they also benefited and they still benefit from, from migrants and it's not only about uh, Central Eastern Europe, taking history, uh, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, mm -hmm. uh, Hong Kong specifically, so uh, England used to be an empire based on uh, all these territories, so, mm -hmm. so of course immigration generally creates problems but also creates opportunities for many countries and indeed in history. So it seems like, um, I'm, I, quite, I, I keep repeating <laughs> this phrase, um, but consequently for us to have these good relations and to maintain the diplomacies between countries, we just, because you touched base on, on this, uh, on, on having legal channels for example, having um, bilateral treaties with Italy or with Portugal or with different countries uh, so that we wouldn't have uh, the impact that, for example, Syrians have on with Italy. And generally Europe, let's say. Um, based on some statistics from European Union used by European uh, institutions, Moldova is not a problem for European Union in terms of migration. Mm -hmm. So the percentage is very, very, very small. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, Moldovans are quite uh, legally binding and, uh, and uh, behaving. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there are many of them which uh, maybe they break the, the, the immigration rules, they stay more than 90 days, but at the same time this is not so massive flow of people coming from, from Moldova. Mm -hmm. uh, Moldovans left the country, Moldova, in a in a long period of time and and, and not in a short period of time, mm -hmm. because many Moldovans start 
started to use their, uh, the possibility which was given by Romanian uh, legislation uh, granting the citizenship. So uh, many Moldovans already got the Romanian citizenship for years and years, for a decade. And many of them left Moldova 10 years ago, 15 years ago, using the Romanian passports. So it was not a, a, a big wave of Moldovans living in a very short period of time, and many of them, like, for example, in terms of crisis with Syria. Mm -hmm. And therefore, Moldovan is not an issue for the European authority, uh, for, for member states. But it is true, and you are right, that would be great that Moldova has the bilateral treaties with many countries in order to uh, protect our citizens from a social point of view, mm -hmm. uh, legal assistance if necessary. And therefore, the focus of Moldovan authorities would be with Italy, Portugal, Greece, Germany, England, to have uh, United Kingdom, to have treaties to protect their citizens, their nationals, to uh, grant the legal assistance if necessary, to help if necessary to bring people back to Moldova, which is called realocare or mm -hmm. how it is called legally speaking. So all this has to be done. Not so many uh, treaties in uh, in force. Um, focus. Seven of them. Yes, fo focus should be the, where we have bigger community of Moldovans living, mm -hmm. and that's about Italy, Greece, Portugal, United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we keep talking more about the challenges, because we have to know the challenges in order to work on them and to provide the conditions for our uh, people. However, I'm really curious also um, if you think there are some good factors that come from this migration. Um, For example, there is uh, the remittances that come from the diaspora is a big part of our GDP. No, I, I will not put it like this. Uh, uh, remittances is the consequence of immigration, but that does not mean that it's an advantage from economic point of view. Better would be that these people live in the country and they gen generate economy here in the country. Mm -hmm. So be better would be to have jobs and play uh, tax here in Moldova and not to, to send uh, remittances home which in uh, let's say 90% of the remittances goes to uh, either real estate, uh, real estate investment or consumption mm -hmm. and uh, it's with a very limited uh, economic impact. Mm -hmm. uh, of course this is a consequence, it brings some economic advantages but not so fundamentals in order to, to um, this cannot be an issue which Moldova and the Moldovan authorities should build strategies of, 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 of doing so. Mm -hmm. um, better is to think how to bring back Moldovans. Better is to think how to create jobs here in order to attract even other nationals uh, and generate economy here in the country, here home. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, we will become like other countries which we export uh, humans in this way. And uh, this is not a development. Mm -hmm. This is a not not a medium long term development. This is on, these are only short advantages. Mm -hmm. And specifically in the in the crises like 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 pandemia, like like this pandemic, then you see the weaknesses of such kind of issues because then people coming back in the country, remittances fell dramatically. Uh, those who came back to Moldova, they do don't work, there are no jobs, and of course the revenues in the budget are lower and lower and remittances as well, and then the economy will completely either slow down or, or will shrink dramatically. Mm -hmm. So uh, going back to my initial question, so what are the positive, maybe long term then factors? For the immigration? Yeah. Well, I see many positive um, sides of immigration because of the uh, sharing the culture, sharing the experience and knowledge. That's, I would say, the, the, the biggest advantage because what Moldova cannot provide in many areas, including studies, uh, Moldovans can get it from, from foreign countries, mm -hmm. foreign universities. Second, it's about uh, mentality people uh, traveling abroad, living abroad, 
dealing with other foreigners mm -hmm. and other cultures will change in mentality and that's what we need in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Moldova as well. And third, um, migration should be something as a temporary phenomenon to bring disadvantages but at the same time to, to, uh, to gain back those people who left the country. So for example, if you are studying today abroad, to make everything possible to bring you back to Moldova. Mm -hmm. There are some products or there are some conditions or there are some projects where, which were launched before by, the, by many governments before. They are still running today, like for example, party one plus one, uh, mm -hmm. but they are not so significant. Um, I think countries should do state, I mean the authorities should do more in order first to retain people, second to bring them back. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, let me let me give you an example also of uh, a third pillar that we were talking, opening the country for other nationals. We try to develop in Moldova an Moldova is very limited in many resources, so we don't have so many opportunities to develop the economy in different areas, mm -hmm. in industries, mm -hmm. because of the limited resources, uh, mineral resources, natural resources. So therefore, um, we have some opportunities, and one opportunity, one industry which can be developed and bring value to economy and to the country is the IT industry, mm -hmm. information technologies and communication. Uh, and sometimes you need to bring also foreigners with very good skills, at least to train Moldovans. And I remember someone was telling me that an Indian national from India, in order to, to, to reach Moldova, needs a lot of many papers, visas, permissions, and it's very difficult to reach Moldova for an Indian. Mm -hmm. But India today is a, is, is a hub it's a global hub of informational technologies mm -hmm. and if you really want to develop different industries you have to open the country which means no visa or visa with very easy access um, no migration uh, strict rules like residence permit labor permit all this has to be either very easy to get or maybe in some cases without them for a while by default like okay Everybody who wants to come to stay three months in Moldova does not need this, 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 this. It's, it's like by default granted the freedom mm -hmm. of staying here and setting up the businesses. So policies, very light, good policies in order to bring people in Moldova, foreigners in this respect. Uh, we were, I, I was witnessing discussions, discussions, and brainstorming and discussions, but less decisions and less implementation, unfortunately. And do you think uh, it, this is going to change with the new government? Do you think they, they are going to have a strategy more focused on, on this um, aspect? I would like to think so. Um, no, I think the new government, if it will be a successful switch to a new government, will have to focus first, maybe for a year or even two, to uh, face the challenges related to this pandemic. We have to recover first mm -hmm. because uh, this gov the, the current government was not taking care of many issues and now the new government would have to uh, really tackle the current issues mm -hmm. in, in, in the sanitary, I mean uh, medical issues, education, economy, social many things but in the stage two mm -hmm. in the future definitely maybe not the new maybe another government after maybe some potential parliamentary elections would have to really focus on some fundamentals and strategies on a medium and long term. Mm -hmm. So it seems like uh, after after this pandemic, um, my migration isn't going to be a priority. But uh, I I I so I so much I very much hope that um, is going to be taken and seen and worked as a priority. Uh, but there are so many other things that the, mm -hmm. the, any new government will just uh, be lost in those priorities. Of course. But um, definitely human resources, let's put it in this way, or migration 
should be something like um, if without thinking properly and tackling this issue, facing this challenge, we don't have a future. Mm -hmm. uh, during many trips in the country, before pandemic, of course now it's uh, with we're traveling with some restrictions and being very careful and taking care of all these measures which are imposed. But um, in the previous period of time, uh, I was talking to many, many business people uh, who has companies or running some businesses and a human resource is becoming a really big problem. If let's say 10 years or 15 years ago we could market ourselves like a country with some potential, please come investors because we have a low labor force and you can find some opportunities to set up the businesses and around those mm -hmm. businesses. If today I would be a, a seller of the Moldovan opportunities for the foreigners, I cannot use this, uh, this argument anymore. Mm -hmm. It seems like a, a vicious cir circle to be honest. Because people, um, the educational system isn't good enough, for example, especially... It's very bad. Let's I'm put it in this way. It's not, it's not a being not good enough. It's really very bad. So we don't have uh, a good working force, and then this affects the labor workforce. And consequently, even the good people that manage to get educated, they go abroad because the justice and legal system and political system isn't stable enough. And moreover, there is another... Um, reason why people are living. It's not only about life and it's not only about this, let's say, uh, life issues day by day which they, uh, f which everybody is facing. It's also about disappointment and disappointment in those expectations of hope. Many people, including young generation, they had an expectation of some changes in 2009 when the communists left and new, let's say, uh, leaders or a new leadership came. There were very high expectations mm -hmm. and a big disappointment afterwards. And people being very much disappointed. Well, I met people, successful people, business people, which they don't have any issues of, uh, let's say, revenues or income or properties, but they still want to leave the country because they just very much disappointed. So they are closing, they are shutting down the businesses. They, uh, and, and they could uh, easily live in this country and maybe provide to their children the best education that they can uh, provide in Moldova and some very nice, prestigious and very expensive high schools, I mean schools, private schools in Moldova mm -hmm. and to send their, uh, their uh, children in some foreign universities but to stay and live here, run the businesses. No, people are also mentally and uh, going through such a big disappointment that they are deciding to leave the country. It's and that's political disillusion. Yeah. A political disillusion, social disillusion, is degradation and uh, People saying, okay, why do I have to live in this environment? If I see this is wrong, this is bad, this is wrong, and I do not believe anymore, and I don't have, and unfortunately I don't have expectation that this will change in the future, because I don't see any alternative to this. And there are four people living. And this is the biggest drama of the country, because now we are not talking about rule of law, justice, and economic conditions. Now we are talking about something deeper and deeper in it's our society. about the moral society. of the people. Yes, mm. yes. And the connection, I guess, between state and society. I will tell you by myself. Uh, I decided to myself to give a second chance. Because normally, uh, part of the, the most important part of my family lives abroad. They are, they are foreigners. Mm -hmm partially Moldovan's children, but they speak, the mother language is, uh, is Czech, they feel Czechs. Uh, I tried them to, f so they feel also Moldovans. Mm -hmm. I speak to them in Romanian language, they, they read the Romanian books, they watch Romanian cartoons, I mean in Romanian language. But at the same time I could really decide one day, uh, make a, take my suitcases and leave. And that would be very easy for me. Mm -hmm. That would be really very easy. 
to buy a ticket and to leave because I have where to go. Mm -hmm. But I decided still to give a chance, to give a second chance. And that's because I believe and I really believe that we still can change this country and the society and to really, really give, um, give a chance to develop and to have our beautiful country as a de developed country. But do you think you, you have the means to do that? Uh, well, I know you have the position, the authority, of course you do. Um, but it seems like the political system, of course, it is corrupt. We all know that. Um, and by going, by having only correct tactics, I guess, it's quite hard to achieve something. And of course, it's not only about the will and wish. It's also about means and it's also about work, hard work. It's also about planning, uh, working, succeeding. So it's a really a, a management of, of processes from the beginning to the end. But without trying, definitely um, you, you cannot achieve anything. Would you bring your children back in Moldova? Or would yes, you... yes, yes, of course, of course. We, w we always have these options. Uh, last week, um, I had a very deep and very comprehensive discussion with my wife. She's very much missing Moldova, and she's very much missing uh, my uh, children as well. So uh, uh, I believe in one, two weeks they will come to Moldova to stay here to see their, uh, their uh, grandparents uh, and, uh, and relatives and friends because they were studying here. They have their mates, they have their relatives, mm -hmm. they have their nanny, which is here waiting for them. So, um, so uh, I would like to bring them not only for vacation, but to bring them for forever. But that's also because of uh, the life in Moldova, and that's because of the lack of opportunities. That, um, as a parent, I would like to give to my children here in Moldova. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much and, and good luck in everything you do and I hope that you will reach your university very soon. <laughs> Thank you. Were you studying uh, online or...? No, I'm not studying in university. I'm in high school okay. still. Um, yeah. Okay, good luck. <laughs> good Thank luck you. and I you hope too. that it was uh, uh, a useful and productive discussion. Mm -hmm.